Здравствуйте. Uh, still I be speaking English and uh, I think that uh, if you will have questions you could ask me in French and in Polish with uh, the language I could understand. Uh, dear Mr. Ambassador, dear colleagues, uh, let me start with a very simple thing which is at the same time quite special. You know when uh, I fly from Moscow to Strasbourg or Paris or Warsaw, my friends know that I go to Europe. From Moscow to Warsaw or to Strasbourg, I go to Europe. When I decide to go to Tokyo or to Delhi, my friends, my wife, they know that I go to Asia from Moscow. The question is, Everybody knows where I go. Nobody knows from where I go. To go to Europe or to Asia, but from where? Moscow is, in this way, is a very special point, very interesting, and of course, histor historically, very disturbing. Because up till now, we do not have answer how close we are to Europe, and are we Europeans? This is a crucial point, and probably I'll start with it, but firstly I'll say that if we today, I'll be talking about Russian soul, about European soul, let's, uh, let us understand that, of course, it's mostly a metaphor, because I'll be speaking about Russian mentality, European mentality, Russian character, European characters, and that's why soul in this case is not just that I'm going to, to speak about God and metaphysics. I'll be speaking at, uh, mostly at, uh, about uh, this mentality in my country, which is quite, quite difficult to be understand. Why? Mm. During the last century, we lost two times almost all our human values, historical values, traditional values. First time it happens in 1917 during the revolution. Our pre-revolutionary values, uh, we could discuss them, we could say that uh, some of them are good, some of uh, them a little bit strange to well, foreigners, but at the same time, it, it was a culture, uh, it was a state, it was a um, history which was analyzed and uh, was understood by many people, including Dostoevsky, Tolstoy, Chekhov, and so on. Uh, so that was our first catastrophe, this uh, disaster, the ruin of all values. After the revolution, it was a long period when the people, I'm not talking about the Communist Party, I'm, do, I do not talk about the rulers, but I talk about simple people like my grandmother, like my grandfather, they didn't know who they are. They didn't know, they, they, they were not Soviet, but they of course already, they are not uh, pre-revolutionary Russian people. And uh, that was very difficult for them to integrate in the new values, but still they integrated, finally, with a lot of sufferings, a lot of problems. Then, in 1991, we again lost our values. Some people would say that the bad values, Soviet values, some people still believe they were the best in the world, but still we lost them. And it was another t Titanic, our moral Titanic, that we had to pass. And now, up till now, this disintegration of values is our mere problem. It is not problem of uh, 
elections, power, uh, context with Europe. The main problem which we have now in, in Russia is that we are people without really strong morality because we don't have this special basement. We don't have this special basement. And you know, if I, I, I would say that Russian person, he, it's his, he or she, uh, she could have a little bag in, in, in the hands, and in this bag he could put values coming from his family, from education, from books, from context with Europe, from context with Asia, but every person will have a bag with diff different values. So it was, since 1990, it was all, all, almost impossible to find a common ground to talk because I'll, I'll have something like 78% of democratic values and a little bit of orthodox values, a little bit of patriot values and so on. But so other people who have 70% of nationalist values or imperialistic values or whatever, you know. So our discussions, if we, you know, we have a habit to sit down at the kitchen with tea or vodka and discuss problems, and firstly, we should understand with whom we discuss. Our friends have different bags, different values, and we discuss all the night from the very beginning who we are, and then all we drunk, we want to sleep, and that's why we ne next time we have to start from the very beginning. Uh, here arrives a new, a very special uh, position of Russian soul, which I think is very positive and still very bizarre. Every Russian person likes to think about the meaning of the life. Uh, since the beginning of the Russian state many, many centuries ago, people live in my country and when now the government is looking for the national idea and cannot find it, I think that it's easy to say that we have this national idea, to find the meaning of the life. Why do we live on this earth? For what we live? Why we have such wife and not another wife? In other words, why such children and not other children, such neighbors and, and so on and so on? And it's a big discussion and our grandfather had it and died without resolving. Our father did it, died without resolving. We are doing this and will die without re resolving these things. But still it's a very good ground for literature. It's very good ground for culture. It is very good uh, point to be a part of Russian intelligentsia because intelligentsia is looking for meaning of the life and then looking for the liberation of um, great Russian people. That's why it's a, it's a little bit confusing now because this liberation happened one day with the end of Soviet Union and now we don't know, uh, we don't know exactly what will be the happiness for the Russians now. What, what, what does it mean? So I want, to, uh, I want to say that meaning of the life for us is far more important for, 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 for European soul. We can't live without it and money, success and all this stuff are important for us but not essential, not a crucial thing. Give us the meaning of the life and we'll be happy. Nobody giving it to us. The other thing is that our people has a very big imagination, and this is a really cultural phenomenon, that when uh, we start to describe how did we spend yesterday, people around say, you have a very interesting life. But it's not a very interesting life. It's just because the description with imagination gives to many Russian people the possibility to describe the life in a very, I would say, uh, art way, a very mm, smart way. And this is also a part of our strong 
possibility because to imagine it, it's already to create, and weak because imagination also helps us to uh, enter all kind of uh, threats, um, thinking that conspiracy will be here and here and here, and even in this hall also. For me, it's a big conspiracy. You're my big conspiracy for today. You know, and uh, this is how also we communicate. And uh, the thing that this imagination also brings us to culture with the meaning of the life shows that, you know, we have a very good, very, very well, no, well, very, uh, profound, very deep position for the de developing all kind of culture, cu culture things. Russia is very strong in culture, even when there is a fight between different, uh, different values. And you know, as uh, as I know that uh, already in Dostoevsky we had three brother Karamazov plus one more Smerdyakov, and ha they have different positions. So, you know, now we nation of brother Karamazov with different positions. But still, we, all of us, are heroes of one book called Russia. No, we passing our life like heroes of the novel. And to write about any of Russian person is interesting because passing the life now, even now, it's just surviving, not to live, but to survive. Surviving from the past, uh, surviving in now in present and in the future. Is it good for civilization? It's a difficult question because, you know, if you have to find out meaning of the life, if you have such crazy imagination to build a good road, it is secondary thing. Firstly, please find the meaning of the life. Then you'll build the road or will we'll buy a good, uh, a good dress. Uh, it's very important that uh, we in Russia um, have this pluralistic point of view. And when a foreigner tells me, what do Russian think about that and that, it's the same if you would say, what is the weather today in Russia? Russia is so huge. And uh, even traveling a lot in, in Russia, I would say that I, I saw something like a, a, a one third of uh, Russia during, during my life. So weather is different and the opinions of the people are different. So Russian soul today is multicultural phenomenon. It is such multicultural like a European soul. But here you have many nations. We also have many nations. But I am speaking now mostly about Russian people. It's also multicultural position, you know? And uh, a babushka from Siberian village would say that uh, who never saw dollar or euro, she, she would say, Europe, where it is? And a, a person in Kaliningrad believe that he, she lives in Europe. You know, so more than half of population in Russia would say we are not Europeans, more than half. But people today in Moscow, in big cities, they are so close in, in uh, living their life to Europeans that I would say that Moscow today is a European, European uh, capital. It's European capital with a lot of val values which is very close to, to yours. So when we see that uh, uh, Russia is so multicultural and half of population don't accept Europe as, uh, as their own home and more almost the same half of population still believe that Stalin is a good historical hero, then we could say that 
we have country with very different orientations. Now in Europe, um, people, and not, not only now, people, they, they think that Russia is uh, a big room in the European house, house, probably not very clean, but Europeans know that one day it will be clean and everything will be fine with this room. Probably there are some, some rats there or some other animals, but we need a big vacuum and one day everything will happen. But you know, I think still that uh, Russia is in and out of Europe any moment. And still, as I told you the story about where to go, and I think that still it's a separate house with windows open to Europe, but also open to other, uh, other horizons. And in this house, we sometimes have life which is a little bit strange for Europeans. Um, sometimes it's a good pretext to say we are different and that's why we don't understand what doesn't mean European democracy, freedom, and so on. It's a good pretext, and some people do that. But sometimes it's true. It's true. Because if you ask Babushka in Siberia, Babushka, what does it mean freedom? She said, Sinok, I don't know. I know because she does not know what does it mean freedom. And it's not because she is stupid. She is great. You, you could stay with her for several weeks, and she'll tell you such stories that it will be it's, it will be a novel, as I told you, but still it is the problem of our maturity, political maturity. We didn't have time to grow up like uh, here in Europe to understand the real things in politics. Under the Tsar, we had a lot of peasant population, a lot of, you know, this they having uh, heavy working working class and so on and this uh, this part of russia were, was not very democratical in the soviet union democracy it was orwell it was orwell perversion of this uh, world and we spent 20 years uh, after the soviet union it's a, a big period but with all these stresses and with all these complications, it is difficult for the older generation also to understand what's going on. That's, that's why when you come to, to Russia, firstly, you, you probably don't understand what's going on. And then you understand that we need some more time, some more time, some more understanding to come and to catch to catch our values. 20 years is uh, our more or less uh, freedom time. 20 years is more or less uh, possibility to go and enjoy European comfort, like tourists or to come here to, to, um, to university just to travel, like uh, Gorbachev liked to travel before he became president of the Soviet Union, just to travel by car. And I must tell you that this is a very big necessity for the Russian soul to observe you, Europeans, and to understand that they could be comparable, European values and Russian values. It, they could work together. And I think that now in the world, we have to find a way to come close to each other with all the threats around, all of this terrorism and all kind of things that could come soon, or sooner or later. I think that I'm speaking about Russians. I'm speaking not about the government. I'm speaking not about, uh, not about the uh, uh, kind of ideology now coming from the, from the up. I'm speaking just about people who really, really uh, are uh, 
people with whom it's possible to, to organize this discussion and to go together, to go together and to, to even to enjoy, to enjoy the, the future of the world. For this reason, I, I, I think that I'll be close to Mr. Putin asking you to, to, deal, to do something and to deal with the visas. Because we, to come here, we have problems with um, um, embassies of many uh, Schengen countries. And I must tell you that all Russian bandits, all Russian prostitutes are already here with you. Already many years they are here you know, with good houses and good Mercedes cars and so on and so on. They know how to buy Schengen visas. And students, intelligence, uh, middle class, just people, you know, from Perm or where there is no consulates, people from Vladivostok, they could go to China, but it is very difficult to come and to just to enjoy your weather today, the Strasbourg, you know, beautiful city, you know. And it's uh, this, uh, mm, you remember Dostoevsky said once that beauty will save, save the world. And you know, Europe is beauty. And you know, if you invite people of my country to come here, to let them spend money here, I believe it will be only positive thing, you know, only positive thing. And uh, Putin for his reasons, me for my reasons, but I'll say that it, it should be a big discussion and it should be a positive solution to, to, to this problem of visas. Um, you, would say, you would say that uh, we are a country which could immigrate here. But, you know, historically, R Russians, they, they are not big immigrators. And if there is a possibility to live in Russia, to have money, to build houses, and to enjoy more or less the life, nobody will leave the country. This is my opinion, which I have for many, many, many years. The other problem is that um, still we are, of course, we are different. And let me tell you what I think about the European soul today. I think that uh, from Europe, uh, you would say that Europe it is just uh, some kind of uh, um, political unity and uh, some kind of uh, economic decisions. But from Russia, I would say that from Finland to Spain, from Greece to um, Iceland, there, there is something which is common. And this something is important for, for um, this continent. And this something is, I think, that you take responsibility for your life. We are still not on this uh, level just because we don't have possibility to take this responsibility. And you do that. And you know, it's when you do it, 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 time for you is different, money for you is different, children, family, all this stuff is a little bit different if you have this responsibility since m m already m many centuries. And uh, of course, uh, the second thing that we probably, where well, we are a little bit different, that we have imagination and Europeans, we have this uh, possibility to analyze the, the things in a rational way. We still live in a fairy tale. You know, we have positive uh, heroes like Stalin for many uh, people. We have negative like Gorbachev, our negative person for many, for, for many, many Russians. And this is a fairy tale. And in this fairy tale, there are hours who are good, and there are bad people who are uh, foreigners. You uh, left this fairy tale many, many centuries ago, and this rational analysis uh, brought you, thank you for that, to Marxism, to Freudism, and all other uh, way of analyzing 
who you are, who you are. You know, we took Marxism from you, again, thank you. We suffered a lot from you, from your um, philosophical analysis, but, and we let also suffer our colleagues in, in Poland and other countries. But still, as a general thing, it's very important that you say, I know life because I can analyze it. Russia will say, to analyze, we could also could give blood to analyze, to, to the laboratory, but not our, not our uh, uh, thoughts and our opinions. In this way, when people start to be rational, you win things and you lose things at the same time. I think the most uh, controversial thing that is going now in Europe, it is not uh, your economic or financial uh, problems. It's also a problem of um, philosophical, uh, um, philosophical level. Uh, it's a problem of metaphysics. You know, sometimes uh, um, in America, people say, if you start to speak about God during the lunch, nobody invites you anymore. In Europe, it is not like that. But still, you know, when uh, Frederick Nietzsche said um, more than 100 years ago that God is dead, um, Europe finally start to believe it. I had recently, I, I have a new pro TV project uh, in Russia, my meetings with the most interesting people of the world. And I start with my friend, my dear friend, and, and very talented film director, Mr. Wajda, in Poland. When he's, and we, had, we made a film with him about his life. And I, I told him, do you believe in God? Because in Russia, it's possible to ask such questions. And he said, you, you know what, I never been to the church, Kostel, since the end of the war. I said, why? I don't believe in God. But I say, and after the death, what are you going to do? He said, nothing. I said, but how you, could you support your values? He said, oh, this is European civilization, this is books, this is my films. But I said, but then you are betrayal of this uh, civilization because you are the last uh, generation when you could say, I have these values because I, I do not have to the church, but I know what doesn't mean Christian values. But your children and after them, they, it will be, you know, separation. As you remember, Spielberg, Spielberg's first film, it was an existential film about death and life. And secondly, he understood there will be no public for such film, and he started to make films about something else, right? The same, but we are, we, are, we are feeling what could come in Europe, because without this support, it's impossible, it's impossible to develop values. And if it's impossible to develop it, what's coming? You, coming, I would say, terror of security, what I feel here, you know. I, uh, my friend, my German friend who is sitting here, he came from Mannheim, and uh, he knows that one day I decided to go to, from Paris to Mannheim, and I noticed that every people now drive very carefully, and they're afraid to, to to, 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 to get some bad news from police. And it's true, and it's true, it's very true that now they, there are less death on the road and it's very good. But then, next time, we'll say don't eat salt, don't eat sugar, don't drink too much, don't uh, use, use all secure me uh, measures with sex, uh, uh, flights, uh, and so on and so on. And then we could ask ourselves, and is this security, and you know, we are, 
where we are ill people about security because we passed 70 years without state security called KGB, you know. You don't have this KGB, but you have this idea about security. And this security of the European arm, this is not a bureaucratic question. This is a question of anthropology, you know. And it's necessary to be a big, a big philosopher to understand where aggression is necessary for the human being and where this aggression or kind of aggression or whatever linked with aggression is just something that you should kill, like uh, you kill, uh, you, how would say, appendices, you know, in, the, in your stomach, and everything will be fine, right? I want to say that Europe doesn't feel it. I, I agree, I am I, I, ready to drive carefully. I, I'm not very ready to, to eat everything without salt. It will come, you know? But, you know, when you see this, all these things, coming to Europe, you see this, this trembling about, ah, don't do that because, ah, it's, it, it, it's politically it's not correct. Politically it's not going to do that, 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 that. Politically, uh, Mar Mark Twain is not correct now because, you know, he, he used bad words in, in his books about uh, black population and about other things. And, you know, and so should we cut culture? Should we should we find a possibility for the new censorship? From where going with uh, censorship? Uh, Mr. Ambassador told you that I am writing for her trip. It's very true. But, you know, when uh, this is a part of New York Times, right? But sometimes they decide to publish me in the New York Times the same day. But, you know, there are the difference of six hours. During these six hours, every time I have a fight with New York Times because they want me to be or liberal, or a little bit conservative, but they want me to be American. You know, they cut me in a way that it's very nicely, but they want me to be, you know, like to cut the hair and let me be American. And say, I don't write it because I, 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 it's not my writing. And they, they just say, Mr. Refib, you know, we, we couldn't find you on telephone, excuse us, but next time we'll do that. And it goes like this. So you see, this censorship, it's not because they don't like me or my writings, but they understand that stereotypes could work. And if the stereotypes will work, the situation in Europe, not in, in, in America, but also could be, you know, a little bit uh, bizarre, because then you, you, you'll be losing this courage to say, I want to do that. I want to, to laugh in such and such a way, and so on and so on. And if it, it goes like this, I would say that um, it's really necessary to organize uh, in these institutions. And I was very interested when um, Mr. Ambassador told me that there is, uh, there is now this uh, uh, direction of stra strategy, uh, strategy right for the future, because you know, really, one thing just to say, we save our lives just because of that. But the other thing is just to, to think what, what could be in the future. This is, I, I, I don't think that this is, a real, this is a real threat now. But still, you know, as you probably know, that the, uh, the fair, fair in the tropical, uh, tropical um, forces is there, the fair. So I important for the development of this, no, of this. I don't compare fair with war. I'm, of course, I'm against war. Of course, I am against all this, this kind of aggression. But still, if we want to know who we are in Europe, we should think what, how to use this analysis, how to use this anthropological knowledge to understand where we are going and what for. And what for will have who we'll have also our children to, to fight and to, to be themselves. Um, of course, I've come from the country, and, uh, and you say, this guy don't speak, does not speak political question because probably he, he is afraid. No, I, uh, I, I'm not afraid. I, uh, I, I have my position in uh, Russian. I, during last election, I was in the 
uh, a committee of uh, Prokhorov who was against Putin and uh, we won a lot of voices in Moscow, more than half, half Moscow voted against Putin and so he is like Napoleon now sitting in Kremlin around, and uh, the city is uh, more than half city is against his rule. So uh, I am not against, but I think that the situation is more complicated than sometimes people think uh, being in Europe. You know, our, um, our opposition movement is a movement which really was fantastic uh, uh, d discovery of my life. You know, when uh, I was on Prospect Sakharov and I see 100,000 of people from the podium, I said, this is my people, this is my Moscow, and these people were funny with all their slogans, ironical, and I felt like in Paris in 68. It was just a feeling that finally we've come to Paris. You know, and uh, it was a big feast, national feast in Moscow. The other thing is that uh, this movement is divided now uh, there are evolutionary part uh, of this movement and revolutionary part. And this revolutionary part, part during the all kind of uh, uh, discussions, uh, demonstrations, they say Putin go to prison. But Putin, do, he doesn't want to go to prison, you know. Uh, I don't know why, but he doesn't want. <laughs> he just want to be, you know, in Kremlin, not in prison. He, does, he doesn't want to change with Khodorkovsky. He doesn't just see, he, he, better Khodorkovsky for him, let him be in prison and Putin will be in Kremlin. And you know, when on Balotne Square or in Prospect Sakharov, people, uh, uh, people shouted, you know, in a voice of 100,000 persons, Putin, Lysha, Magadan, if someone understands Russian, they understand. If not, it's difficult to translate, but Putin, Ski, Magadan. Magadan is far away to, in Siberia, right? So Putin was sitting there and saying, no, I don't want to have Ski, <laughs> no skiing, no Magadan. Better you'll go to, uh, to Ski. And then after, he finally, so Medvedev was afraid to, to say, I want to be a president for the second time. He decided better to be, it's also a part of Russian soul, by the way. You know, he said, I am your friend, I will be your friend. You know, you gave me possibility to be four years a president, now take it back. And uh, a lot of people uh, around Kremlin, in, in Kremlin, wanted Medvedev to continue because, you know, Medvedev, uh, uh, Medvedev is still different from Putin, you know. But he said, no, I'm friends so. And when Putin came to power and said, who shouted that I, who want me to be skiing? <laughs> you, okay, come here, we'll talk. And now we, we have this, almost the same thing that we had already in our history in 1905 during the first revolution when there was explosion of social, so, uh, s s s social uh, mm, um, discontent, you know, and at the same time, uh, at the same time, uh, with revolutionary uh, uh, parties lost. So you you understand? So now this is a really fight between two wings. One wing is Putin with his surrounding. And from the other side, this, uh, uh, this, uh, um, this people with uh, their liberal, democratical European views. That's why we pass difficult time with Europe, because our European people in Moscow, they are against Putin. And Putin understands that if he'll come closer to Europe, he'll go to prison very soon because it will be like this, you know, if we speak only on, 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 the, on the level of you know, mentality, you know. So uh, European, European position for Putin is something that could be, uh, should be avoided. I don't speak in Amer about America, because if now America is, uh, 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 they play cards where Americans are 
uh, uh, enemies. Enemies, you know, uh, we played with card with uh, inside the country. Outside, we we had a lot of contacts with the United States, but inside country, people uh, watching TV. Oh my goodness, what is going on in America? You now, you are half enemy. You are not a real one, but you are you are not no, you are not friend for. For, for Russian television, state television, you are not friend. No, no, you all of them, you 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 lost your morality because of of all this discussion about sexual m minorities and so on. It's a big, big, big discussion in Russia how terrible the degradation of Europe and so on and so on. But at the same time, when I say that we have we have uh, that uh, we we have. Uh, professors coming from many countries to to Moscow to describe Moscow as attention as capital of lesbian love, you know, and it's true. And they even come to me, even if I'm not a lesbian, just to 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 talk about this. You know, this is interesting. What, how it happened? And people they don't know about this. Only professors. But of course that that pff, people, you know. Try, try to, to, to fight about uh, this phenomenon uh, from the uh, orthodox and, uh, and uh, ultra uh, uh, conservative uh, point of view. This is obvious. You know, so um, this is number one. Number two, opposition movement took in itself, and it's very dangerous, a lot of nationalists. A lot of nationalists. So, you know, even when I was and with Sakharov, uh, Sakharov Prospect waved with nationalist flags, a lot of them there. You know, so this play is dangerous. And now coming straight to the free elections. So this opposition movement, me as well, we want free elections. Free election for president, free election for the mayor, free ele election for, all, for the all levels. Now let's talk totally honestly and openly if we have tomorrow free elections, half of Russia will be ruled by nationalists. More, more, more conservative than Putin. And now I'll tell you one thing and you'll kill me immediately. I will tell you that Putin is more liberal than 80% of the Russian population. 80%, you know? So some people believe we had we had a lot of scandals, scandals. Uh, uh, now, because we, when we, we got this repression, to, now there are people who, who want to go to, straight to the end, and all of them believe that Putin will go also straight. But he, he doesn't do that. He, I, I don't know him very well, but still I understand that he, 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 has, he has this balance, not to go to, 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 became, to become a new Stalin, right? Even he, if he really doesn't like uh, Pussy Riot, you know. But still in Moscow they like Pussy Riot. I like Pussy Riot. I told on the Moscow TV that I, I, it's a pity that I, I was not with them because I could uh, also uh, think, uh, because we do, they don't think very well, me neither, so it could be a good ensemble. Yeah, but but we are brave, and uh, what we said uh, d uh, during the uh, uh, the legal process, uh, uh, process legal. I must tell you that we are wonderful with girls, really wonderful. So you you, you understand that uh, probably in Moscow liberal liberals will win if we have free elections, but you know you cross your you you jump from from Moscow to to the uh, so-called Podmoskovia, the, the uh, super surface of Moscow, m mentality is changing immediately. Immediately, no, you have like the the wind coming from far away Russian provinces, and this is our reality. And you should understand this reality because we have to be together. And and I don't want to be pessimistical because in Russia it's so easy to be pessimistical. Say so everything is terrible. Why well, Putin is terrible? You know, Medvedev is shit. You know, everybody is terrible. State TV is shit. And you know, uh, people are shit because they don't understand anything in liberalism. You know, but at the same time, 
you know, we made a big step uh, from the Soviet Union to, to the life we have now. I don't speak about politics, but if you come to Moscow, if you go to, to Moscow cafe, if you go to Moscow discotheque, if you go to Moscow, Moscow gallery, I must tell you that you, you, you will see big difference between Strasbourg and Moscow. 20 years ago, we were slaves and slaves of the slaves, you know. Now, we on the level of social life, all our newspapers, including government, they are 1,000 percent more open to discuss. I, I'm not speaking about politics. I'm speaking about social life. They criticize, 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 and so on. Is it positive? Yes, because before, even when we have uh, nuclear explosions, Soviet newspapers didn't write about it. Now, if we have uh, one policeman who killed a woman passing on the trottoir, all uh, newspapers will write about it. Sometimes it's ridiculous. Uh, two years ago, I broke my uh, left, uh, just on the, uh, on the ice, I broke my, uh, my arm, and uh, mm, 100 newspapers wrote, wrote tomorrow that Victor R.F.A. broke his arm. There will be no other news, about, uh, only this, you know. It's, it's more important than when I publish a new book there, you know. This is also a new kind of culture. But still, I think that on this level, of, of, of the level of uh, intelligence, of the level of discussions, on the level of talks, uh, meetings, please come closer to, to our students, to our middle class people, to our businessmen, to, our, the, to the people who, are, uh, who, who want to come here and spend their money here. And we have, sometimes, I'm not speaking about students, sometimes we have good money to spend here. You know, so I want to say uh, such thing, that Russian uh, arm uh, in France, Russian soul, and European soul, they could marry. It, it, it will be not a simple marriage, but, but we are not going to kill each, uh, each other. You know, never, never. It's uh, about this, it's finished. I think that uh, the the most terrible thing it could be big discussions, you know, in the family. Now, should uh, Europe come closer to Russia? I don't know, but Russia anyway in the future will be a European state. Anyway, we don't have, we are not going to be uh, from the other side of the globe. I even don't speak about China. China is a great country. But I, I'm speaking Asia like a, a old notion about what does it mean. It's, it's a dust, uh, um, terrible things, and so on and so on. The last thing, because I think well, we should uh, finish, you know, it's very important also to understand if there is a marriage, I think intellectual marriage, what is still different. And I want to say it for the, just by the end of my talk, because this is very important. Europe now, these days, they believe here in Europe that a state should serve people. That state should be organizer of your life in a way that you say, I want this and state will help you. Or anyway, we will not say don't do that if you, do, you are on the legal, legal field. In Russia still, historically, and that's why our authority they play with this, still a lot of people believe that we have to serve the state. And that's why this, this play that uh, is going now on the very high level with the Orthodox Church is very, very dangerous. Because if uh, one day president and the head of Orthodox Church Church uh, will take their arms in one brave gesture, we will come to Iran in Moscow very soon. You know, we have this opportunity. So I think the, our problems, the problems of uh, Russian soul now is that it still believed that there were values more important than human values, states' values, 
religious ways, and so on. That's, it's easy to manipulate with such soul. Secondly, po political uh, naivety. It's easy to manipulate with, with such people. But, and now I'm finishing on the positive, Russian soul is a polar soul. We, we, we are not coming to compromise. We, 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 like, we like cold and hot at the same time. We are people who uh, could unite impossible things in themselves. And it is very difficult to, to rule such, such people. And this is why I think we will have a good future.